What's up, YouTube? This is Abyss and Lou coming at you with an upcoming games list for 2019. Anthem, what do we think? Uh, I think I'm in a position where I'm um, unhealthily hyped about it, like to a very dangerous point because I feel like it could definitely fail. Um, the gameplay is some of the best that Bioware has ever done. Bioware up until now has been very, very strongly dependent on their storytelling. The replayability of it, it's not a story game. It's uh, a destiny type game. So there's going to be some grinding. Um, and the problem with these kind of games these days is that Destiny has already felt the burn for this. If you're going to classify your game as an MMO, you need longevity. You need a game that's going to keep you coming back day after day. Destiny has really struggled to keep that going. I'm not sure if Anthem can accomplish that either. I think the, the idea is kind of... It's dangerous because it's trying to be a jack of all trade. It's like they're trying to add too many different components together. They haven't got the time or scale to commit to it, to be able to produce that. You know, like Destiny 1, Destiny 2 are much better now, but they've had more time. So is that a key factor here? How much time has Anthem been in development? I don't know, but... I think that's one factor. More time, I think. Uh, on the other side of it, Destiny doesn't have the most exciting loot system, and Anthem is definitely going a very different style with that, which I think will help it. Um, I don't know if it'll help it enough, but I definitely think it will come in handy. Uh, Anthem's going to be working with a Diablo-esque loot system where when you get a piece of armor, it shows the exact stats of how this armor is going to help you, whether it's 50% uh, reduced cooldowns on certain abilities, you know, 20% more damage or uh, 1,000 extra HP. There's going to be exact stats, while Destiny has a very vague light system which makes the grind not as exciting. And I think that will help them, but I don't know if it's strong enough to save them. Is it enough? We'll find out. So February well. comes out February 22nd? Yeah. Yes, sir, February 22nd. Oh, they also have a open beta coming up at the end of July. Oh, really? um, July? At the end, I, I'm sorry, July, January. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> July's a little that's, bit that's further the than the game <laughs> <laughs> that, what? Bit late that would now. be kind of an awkward time to do a bit. <laughs> how, how hyped are we for? We had to hype it out of completely out of our minds hyped, like we're spraying man juice out of our nipples hyped, or like I'd rather eat my shoe hyped. Where 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 are you sitting? Here? I think I'll sit with a basic, you know, one to ten scale. I think that's a little bit more easier to uh, understand. So one to ten, probably like twelve which is very, very unhealthy. Um, this game kind of has the things that I've always wanted. Um, <laughs> there's stuff <laughs> flying out of my nipples for Lou's uh, enjoyment. There, yeah, there's milk coming out of my nipples. That's how excited I am. Next game we're gonna talk about is Days Gone. This is going to be a PS4 exclusive. Sorry to break the hearts of any Xbox or PC gamers out there. It's coming out April 26th and um, it's another zombie game. How are we feeling about that, Lil? If it was two years ago, I'd say I'm really sick of zombie games because everything that came out was a goddamn zombie game. So it's been a while now since we've had a zombie game if we exclude the Walking Dead game that was Dead on Arrival. Yeah, we're um, not talking about that one. <laughs> so actually, we played that a little bit and I, we actually enjoyed it. Beta, it was, was fun. It was good. And then it came out to release and it somehow got worse. I don't, For I don't $60. know what happened, but... Yeah. Anyway, so Days Gone, I'm still, I know it's on Unreal Engine 4, I know it looks great, I've seen a few screenshots and videos of it, but beyond that, I have no real idea what the hell it's about, so what the hell is it about? Alright, so as a, as a base breakdown, if anyone's ever seen uh, the movie World War Z, it's a very, very uh, zombie swarm based movie. Is that Brad Pitt? Uh, that's with the Brad Pitt, absolutely. So many of those themes were with hundreds of zombies coming at, at, the, uh, at the actors at a time. Just massive swarms of them. And Days Gone, as well as a World War Z game coming in the future, uh, which is already on the Epic Store, if you've seen that recently, um, these two games are trying to bring this zombie swarm mechanic uh, into fruition. And they're hoping that it gets people a little bit more hyped into the zombie world. Now, World War Z is going with a multiplayer perspective, while Days Gone is going to be a single player only game. In fact, they were brought up to uh, by another company who offered to work with them on a multiplayer component, and they said, no, we're not doing multiplayer. This is going to be 
completely and fully single player and we're gonna nail this story so i think they're trying to go with more of a red dead 2 uh, red dead redemption 2 type style where it's open world you have the ability to move on or you can continue focusing on the story um right. and i think it, it the difference with that versus the last of us is you can make the story easier by delaying it. You can go out, you can gather materials, you can str strengthen your character, strengthen your bike, and that makes the story easier. Or you can just kind of blast through the story and 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 roll with the punches. You know what I mean? Well, let me call Actually, me goddamn towers. To there are things the to climb. <laughs> there oh, are damn it. <laughs> it's not, it, not for the sake of, of uh, <laughs> revealing the map. No, we're not. We're not playing Ubisoft games here, but. There are definitely a lot of verticalities. If you've watched any of the E3 trailers or gameplay trailers, um, at one point they had a part where you basically had a big building and the character was moving up level level by level, setting traps as he went, blowing up bridges and different things like this as the zombie swarm chased him. And we're talking again, hundreds of zombies. Um, and he used the verticality to his advantage. So there are uh, options there that are not as trivial as ubisoft's climb this tower reveal the map you know what i mean yeah i i when i saw the trailer i saw it's almost like Le the original left for dead and, you know when you'd have massive hordes coming towards you and at the time that was a lot of zombies you know? that was like holy crap this is a lot of zombies i've got to deal with you know you could get really overwhelmed and then the video for this game is just like 10 times that right? exactly but then you think well they don't usually do that because it's quite hard to render that many things at once moving and that, that's quite tricky so what worries me is it's had a few delays. Have they had to dial that back? Because for me, the major selling point, and what they seem to be when they first announced the game, the whole main kind of thing was, hey, look at the size of our zombie pile. It's pretty right, big. So swarm. has that gone yeah. down at all? That's my main concern. They've never said anything about dialing it down. They have had delays, but they've never said we're dropping the zombie swarms. Because again, like you said, that's their biggest selling point. I feel like if they did that, they're going to lose a lot of customers. They're going to lose a lot of confidence in their game. Um, at the at the other extent of it, a lot like, um, unlike most zombie games, you don't need a headshot to kill these zombies. You don't need a lot of power to kill these zombies. They're, they're, the zombies are trying to kill you with numbers, not strength. I, I think their tension is, are you ready to handle this swarm? Uh, if you're not, you got to make sure not to alert this swarm. Mother, set to K2. Hasn't got massive large hordes, and the game's yes. pretty boring as a whole. The, the missions are lame. The whole game was just disappointing, really. However, it's an open world zombie game and it has multiplayer co op. So, all this dethroned that as much as it doesn't need dethroning, it's dead now anyway. Which is the problem. I don't think State of the Day Coup, D D Decay 2 was a strong enough game <laughs> to be <laughs> Kekeku Kekeku was really not a strong enough game to be of, of solid competition. This game has a lot of backing behind it. It's got a lot of um, marketing. It's had a few E3 trailers. It's had a lot of hype trying to work with it. It had some delays as well, but I can understand that with some of the mechanics they're trying to bring to it to an extent. I'd rather them delay it and get it right than release it a buggy mess. I think it's more direct competition is definitely going to be World War Z. The thing about World War Z is it's going to have classes and it's going to have co-op. So you're going to have to choose between do I want a single player game or do I want a co-op experience? And they're both going to aim for the zombie swarms. While World War Z is not planned to come out in 2019, a lot of people might hold off on this game so that they can play that, so that they can play it co-op with their friends and they can play with different classes and different gameplay uh, diversities. So... I think that's definitely going to be a big focus when it comes to competition for this game. I nothing know else. If we get nothing I already else, know what's coming. Give me Cyberpunk 2077. I know it. <laughs> in 2077, they voted my city the worst place to live in America. Main issues, sky-high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. This city's always got a promise for you. It might be a lie, an illusion, but it's there, just around the corner, and it keeps you going. It's a 
city of dreams. And I'm a big dreamer. CD Projekt Red, I need this game. I need it. I watched that 48 minute gameplay trailer, which if you have not seen, go and see it now. It's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I, I haven't seen it. Oh my God. I we're gonna watch it after we're done with this video. We're gonna watch it. Because it's, it's just amazing. It's, it's amazing. I cannot stress how amazing it looks. It, hold on, I need to, I haven't seen it. The Cyberpunk 2077, it hasn't got an official release date. Also, PlayStation had a like, coming attractions video that released January the 3rd. And that sort of showed a lot of games that were coming up. But they didn't say this year specifically, and this game wasn't on there. And this is a pretty big game, so I'm surprised by that, but perhaps CD Projekt Reds are just extra cautious here, so we don't want to promise it and then let everyone down. Um, but, dude, it just looks amazing. How, oh, how have you not watched that trailer? I mean, oh my, my problem is, don't get me wrong, I know, I believe in, in um, uh, Pro CD Projekt Red. You know, they've proven time after time with the Witcher series and such that they can make a solid game. They don't have to lock it behind horrible amounts of DM, uh, D DRM, and they don't have to lock it behind these uh, atrocious paywalls and, and microtransaction schemes. They make a good game, they give you the price, you buy it, and you enjoy the full function of the game, and they make sure it's a damn good game in the process. So I do have a lot of faith in CD Projekt Red. If I'm not mistaken, it's a first-person shooter. Yep. Yep, so it's I think that's going to be... A, it's yeah, just, a first-person RB. It's kind of like uh, um, the other freeform game. Um, Mankind Divided. What's it called? Deus Ex. Deus Ex is the first-person shooter RPG yeah. type game. First similar to um, Deus Ex, yeah. So, and I love those games. I love Deus Ex games, and I feel like this one can kind of translate over into that, and it'll hook me a lot more. This looks uh, like that game on steroids, like so <laughs> much further above and better. Like I can't even explain. If you, without seeing the trailer, it's hard to explain what is how good it. Which looks. is the problem? I don't think I've looked into it enough to get hyped. Is no the problem where we're at? It's a seamless world. It's like GTA. We don't know how big the world is yet, but. The thing is, it's it's called Night City, right? So it was all about how it looks at night, and they were like, okay, well, we're going to do this in the daytime as well. We're going to have a night and day cycles. That was Night City going to kind of come across in the day, and they've done all these, like, almost like Watch Dogs 2 kind of bright colours, and it just looks incredible. And the density, the, the crowd, the people walking around the streets, just it's so dense, popular, and it looks so, so good. And the gameplay looks pretty good as well. There's a lot of... I'm worried it might be a bit too easy, because of all the enhancers, like almost like DSX, where you get all these enhancers, you can, you can like run up walls, you can like bend bullets and stuff. There's all kinds of crazy modifications. Really? So, <laughs> there's a lot you can do to your character. So, and this skin has got a lot of choices. You know, you can you can approach it stealthily or go in like I do and probably die a lot. Um, there's a lot of different Pretty choices accurate. you can make that impact the story as it goes on. So, you, the character creation alone, you can create your own character. Like you get a male or female, and you can modify how they look. To, just massive levels. MMO Female. style character creation. And she looks awesome, by the way. She looks amazing. But I sounds like a much better voice actor. Maybe it's just bias here because I prefer her voice, but he looks incredible. So definitely need to check out that trailer. I'll Please. definitely have to check out this trailer at some point and we'll dive a little bit deeper into it. Um, also, they did say microtransactions are not going. Which, again, CD okay, Projekt Red see. is a very, very big company who believes in no drm and and no gimmicky sales on the side they give you a price they give you a great game you're good to go it's a very admirable company and, and i do have a lot of faith in them and how they'll do with this game unfortunately we don't have a official release date we're in polishing phase supposedly so hopefully we can pray for this game for lou's sake at the very least um but don't get your hopes too high oh literally <laughs> i will disappear for face to death when that game comes out i'm gone like, I won't need internet, I'll just disconnect from the earth. Not, Maybe he'll stream it if, if 
if Oku <laughs> can, you know, twist his arm or something. It's possible. You never know. Fucking Wayne Sense will that'd be great. All right. This, I still don't know. This might not be 2019. But if you go by the tweets from Kojima, he did a tweet about this is the year of the whale. And Death Strang has the whale on the beach, you know, the dead whale, whatever how that thing's called. Uh, that's pretty strong hints this year. They had Norman Reedus in New York recently doing very last few mocap sessions, just his face, by looks of it in the pictures they uploaded. So uh, and usually they finish doing their acting and on the mocap stuff as the game's coming to its last pieces. So it looks like we're gonna be seeing this this year. So I'm pretty excited for that. Um, we get the biggest and thing is I believe, such a mystery. And we, if I'm not mistaken, was there not a uh, UK slip for this game? Yeah, uh, Amazon UK slipped that this game would be coming in March 29th. Now, March 29th is kind of right around the corner, so I don't know how trustworthy that kind of leak is, but it is something to consider as well. It's oddly specific date for Amazon to put on there. That Bear is in true. Mind, for Cyberpunk, Amazon put 2030 to 2077 is the release one. So you know, it's very specific. That could be it could have changed because of internal problems, delays, etc. Anyway, so it may have been it was correct, but now it's not anyway. But who knows? Take it with a grain of salt. Maybe March. We but, can um, hope, but take it with a grain of salt. Because look at this game is such a mystery. It's no one really seems to know what the hell it's about. It, it's, even the game designers, they've been in interviews and they're like, I have no idea what the hell it is we're doing. You know, it's a lot of people are saying it looks like a walking simulator, but they have confirmed there is some combat involved. There is some guns, I believe. Um, but all we've seen in the trailers is just Norman Reedus' character walking around, really, or his arm flapping at spirits. Almost. And I feel like uh, if you've known Kojima in the past, I think he's doing that on purpose. I think he's trying to build hype by building more mystery. And I, I you know, this game has had three E3 trailers already. Um, every year they come out with one. Every year they show a little bit more. Every year it gets a little bit more confusing. <laughs> because while they reveal more, none of it makes actual sense. They're showing things and you're like, what the hell is that? I, I don't know baby? how to classify Down that. The throat thing. What is it? In, what? What? Uh, there's a lot of very weird things that have been revealed. And it with every trailer, there's just a little bit more confusion and a little bit more mystery. Some cast of actors they've got in. Norman Reedus. Yeah, but I, I mean, the main character, everyone knows. You know, you've seen him in The Walking Dead for the past almost decade. Uh, Kojima is definitely putting a lot of effort behind this, and most people, I think the game of... will sell with his name alone. Gonna, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a lot of a game by Kojima. Exactly. A Kojima game. They're Kojima gonna sell this game probably game. by his name alone. I think, I think the mystery is a big component. I think arguably Fortnite did so well because of the mystery they had. There was a lot of things going on in the world that people were like, what the hell is this? Or, Why is this happening? And, and I think Fortnite used mystery as a very good marketing tool. We were all trying to figure out what the hell was going on and stuff, much as I don't like to talk about Fortnite, but <laughs> arguably, you, could, you have to say they, they marketed the game very well. The mysteries, the in-game sort of Easter eggs and mysteries was a big component of the success. So oh, yeah, they're definitely. Stranding, definitely doing the right thing there as well. And they, they're working on the engine that they use for Horizon Zero Dawn, so we really know it's going to look great. But it's Horizon Zero Dawn, they borrowed the engine from developers of that. And it's now called the Decimate engine, where they're like both working on it, and then they, put, they work together to combine to one better engine. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, if it. any of you, uh, like you said, if any of you have played Horizon Zero Dawn, it's a beautiful world. And the engine, uh, I've never experienced any frame drops. There's a lot of confidence in the engine. They've done a great job with that. Uh, overall, I don't know a huge ab amount about this game uh, beyond yeah, the E3 no trailers that I've watched. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. A lot of people have dedicated a lot of time into studying the trailers and trying to figure things out. I'm not one of those people. Um, I think uh, Luz definitely dived into this a little bit deeper than I have. Um, but I'm definitely interested in what Kojima's got in store. I've got to give a shout here to another YouTuber called Yong Ya. Yeah. He's great. He's very, very, very good YouTuber very professional he's very in-depth and uh he's done some really good videos that analyze the heck out of the trailers and they go real deep into he's really into this game so shout yeah. out to him how hyped he's definitely you for this done game? a lot more than us if you can be hyped for the game not oh, coming, I don't even know if it's coming out this <laughs> i'm hyped in the respect that i loved uh, uh metal gear solid i love kojima's work up until now uh, i love the acting team um uh, and and I, I've loved pretty much everything that this this development has had. 
Now, as for the game itself, obviously, I have no idea what the fuck to expect. So my hype is a little bit. It's it, the marketing ploy on it is clever. Like I want to get it just to figure out what the hell's going on, you know. But that doesn't help with the hype in general. So I'm probably gonna have to say a seven or eight, something like that. I feel like it's gonna be a, a game that's gonna be quite long. There's gonna be a lot of people be, when it comes out. A lot of people are gonna be not answering questions, but asking more questions. Uh, oh, I just <laughs> just happened. What the hell was this? Or why is this just happened? Or what the hell is this? You know. So I, I want to get happening. it just so I can get involved and see what the hell was going on and try and figure it out as well. You know. So I'm pretty hyped. I'd say not cyberpunk hype. That's like a twenty off a scale. I'm <clears throat> but this game, I'd say I'm I'm like an eight. Yeah, I think I'm around a seven. If I have to say, I I definitely give it. Uh, a lot of trust uh, with where its background is coming from, but this this I'm not good with this building tension. Like it kind of, I want to see what the game what I'm, what I'm actually gonna do. I always find more pleasure in gameplay trailers than I do mystery trailers. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we'll definitely see where that goes. Crackdown 3, I think, is a good one to talk about. This Ooh. is a game that we've yeah. both kind of looked into pretty decently. Um, uh, there's some, there's, there's definitely some bads coming into this game, but there's also some very interesting goods. Um, first off, this is a game that has been delayed three times. Um, these have all been pretty dramatic delays. We're not talking a month or, or two months. We're talking six months, a year kind of delays. I'm these have been sure it was meant for 2015. Originally, if I'm not mistaken. You know nothing. Now, what they're trying to pull off with this game is complete and total destruction. End of story. Now, they've already flat out admitted Xbox does not have the capability uh, to handle this kind of destruction. So what they've been trying to do is use a cloud server based system to basically calculate the destruction and just send it to the Xbox once the calculations were already done because the Xbox just can't handle it. I think the bulk of their delays probably came from this cloud system. Um, obviously, they're not going to tell us exactly what happened, but it's pretty safe bet that that's where it's coming from. It sounds like it's bounced around a few studios. I mean, there's it's weird if you listen to different developers over the years, different people are saying different things. Like we've got some people saying Sumo Digital have had it from the start and I've always been on it. And then it's like, digital picked up data. I'm very confused as to who the hell started this game and if they're still on the game or if it's been swapped around a few times. Like I don't know. Like Dead Island 2, for example, that bounced around a few studios and now it's just vanished. That's this true. game, I think the problem with this game is that so many delays now that I'm no longer excited for it. <laughs> I almost don't believe it's coming. I almost, even if it, they said it's releasing tomorrow and there's physical copies on the shelf, I still wouldn't be excited because I'm just so, like, I, my hype was led on so much that I just don't care anymore. I just don't care. It can come now, out, I just don't I, care about it. To be fair, <laughs> they do have a confirmed release date of February 15th. Who knows? We'll find out. Or is it 2077? Maybe it'll come out at the same time the Cyberpunk's world is in. The absolute destruction, as they promised, seems to be coming into fruition. If you shoot a rocket at a building, the whole thing will come down, depending on where you hit it. So... I read it, I, I watched an interesting thing about this yesterday, actually, but they said, most games, you have buildings, you never go inside the buildings. Like Spider-Man, for example, you don't ever see... They've done some clever stuff, like shaders, so you can see windows, like have a free room behind the window pane. But, but you, can you never still actually go can't inside, get into right? it. But with yeah. Crackdown, because you can put up any wall on any building, you have to have a room behind that wall. So they've had to build a game with that in mind. I imagine that must have been where a lot of delays came from as well. Is I imagine they were like, okay, we can't just build That's a true. city now. We've got to build all the internals as well. That's, yep. That must be a considerable amount of time. I bet the dev team were like, why are we doing this? This is mental. So I'm sure that's... <laughs> I mean, to an extent, I think you can kind of skip on that depending on the building. You know, if you have a smaller house, you don't, you, no one's going to be trying to go inside the house, but you can still make it destructible by having the house break up into general pieces. Like four walls and a roof. They'd actually be nothing. Yeah. And, it, so and they'll have some basic walls inside <laughs> with textures on them. So they probably did that with a lot of the world, but they've already shown in the gameplay trailers that they are running through skyscrapers while being shot at and these skyscrapers are falling down around them while they're running out and they'll jump out of the skyscraper and into another one so i'm gonna say that the vast majority of the world is rendered inside and out like you said and um 
they've already shown a multiplayer trailer with co-op and they've already shown a competitive co uh, uh, multiplayer trailer where one player is literally shooting another player out of the building as it falls around him. So if everything that they've promised over these past decade or two decades, who knows how long they've been developing this game at this point, um, it could be a very, very successful game. But have they waited too long? Has the hype died down too much? My, my, I've got a few issues with this game now. now. Number one, Crackdown will mainly be a team of like super police, right? That protects the world. So why is there focus on destroying it. the world? It seems a bit contradictory, right? So <laughs> well, I mean, it's always been kind of a comical type of superhero. Yeah. Uh, even even in the very first game, you had a car where you could literally go so fast and it was so low to the ground that it would launch every other car into the air, no matter who yeah. it was. And that's from the very first game. <laughs> So it's always been kind of like a, a an anti-hero type cop where you're killing everyone that gets in your way and you're destroying whatever you have to, but it's for the greater good. So in that respect, I guess they can kind of fool around with that. You and know what I'm thinking, saying? Hey, if we destroy the city so there's no one left, then we can't protect anyone and there's no more villains. There's no more it's crime if there's no more people. <laughs> exactly. They have Terry Crews. I like Terry Crews, but in that trailer, <laughs> he, his voice annoys me. Oh really? <laughs> like I just found his foot. I'm gonna shout every line I deliver. Ah! That's what Terry oh. Crews does. <laughs> Bigger, Jackson! How hyped are you? I'm gonna put it this way: in in, in terms of confidence in the game, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> in terms of confidence in the game and its development cycle and 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 how successful it's gonna be, I'm gonna go with a five. I think I'm at a four. I think credit where it's due, if it's not ready, it's not ready, delay it rather than skimp out on the quality. So I'm glad they've done that in a way. However, it's been so long now. They promised so much so early that I've now lost interest. Now, Jedi Fallen Order. What the hell is it? Do we know? Where's it? Where did even come? I didn't even know about this game until like a week ago. And apparently it's coming up this year. So what is it? All right. So, so... <laughs> Yeah. All right. This is a game that um, really no one has known about uh, until about a couple of weeks ago ish. Um, what, E3? So they announced it from Respawn? They. In some they color? Kind of announced it, but they didn't show anything. They're like, hey, we're making a Star Wars game. That's it. Um, so as far as this game goes, uh, <laughs> this is a game that's being developed by Respawn Entertainment. Now, you've probably heard of these people. Um, they have made the uh, uh, incredibly um, underrated games called Titanfall 1 and 2. Now, Titanfall 2 especially had an incredible campaign. It was pretty short, but it was probably one of the most entertaining campaigns I've ever played. And that's that's some high praise. I've played a, quite a few campaigns in my day. So I do have faith in the company. Um, I don't have faith in their publisher's marketing because Titanfalls were incredibly underrated and did much worse than they, they deserve to have done. Bearing in mind, but, EA uh, were the ones part of it. EA released Titanfall 2 right after Battlefield 1. Like, which you've is made why, your again, studio compete with your other studio. It'd be, yes. Why? <laughs> why did they do that? EA, why are you like this? <laughs> I'm not too confident in them, especially this game is supposed to come out in the holidays uh, at the end of this year, trying to, I'm assuming, put it in line with the release of the movie. The problem with that is we have zero proof that this game even exists. Uh, there yeah. is no gameplay trailer. There's not even a teaser trailer. There's some basic screenshot. concept. There's nothing. There's some basic concept arts that look like they were snatched from another game that was canceled in the past. And that's as far as we go. Um, now, from what they're promising, um, I'm interested. I'm interested in, in the basic graphic that they're promising. They're promising an original Star Wars story, fresh off the block. Uh, you're starting as a surviving Padawan after the uh, episode three, the Re Revenge of the Sith. Now, this was for all you Star Wars fans out there, Order 66. The Star Stormtroopers all took the order from the Emperor. They shot down every single Jedi that they can find. There was very few survivors. Anakin decided to switch at this point to the dark side. You are one of these very, very few survivors. And worse yet, you're just a Padawan. So you don't have a lot of power. You're still in training. 
um, and you're going to have to overcome a lot of obstacles because the whole world, the whole galaxy is against you. So I like the idea. I like it. I do. I'm very interested in being able to grow my power as a Jedi and, and kind of overcome this galaxy that's put against me. But I have no proof that this concept is true. How do I believe in it? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to where this game has come from because they were, after saying they don't believe in the story games anymore, they're doing multiplayer games so they can microtransaction ever living hell out of it. Uh, I mean, it was, I can't, remember the, I can't remember her full name now, but it was Amy something, right? She was one of the writers on Uncharted and The Last of Us, really a prestigious writer who was working on a Star Wars game for EA, who they then mm -hmm. cancelled her project on. So I have a feeling a lot of that game's assets and work have made this one to get it. I think otherwise, I'm I'm sure they they did say that a lot of that game was reshuffled into something else. So I'm assuming it's this game. But where the hell is it? What what, what is it? We've seen and we can... out next December this year think, from their website. It says, and I quote: "This game will be releasing holiday 2019." That's a pretty stern quote for something we've not even seen. How can they possibly be working on two games at the same time, let alone one as massive in name as Star Wars? And DICE. DICE have really, you can tell they're really struggling to do a game a year. They've, the Battlefield's really gone downhill since they've been doing Star Wars Battlefront. You know, like the quality That's true. is they're great, but their... the quantity of content is just not there. Because they, they don't have the time. They're splitting their time between they're two a games. Huge team. They're pretty big. So, and they're very experienced and they, they built the engine they made frostbite you know it's their That's engine true. if anyone can up. do anything with that engine it's dice you know so that they're struggling to produce content that quickly is estimable. overall this is a game that has a a very very big shadow over it and and we can't see into it so we had there's no way to believe right now i you know my height meter towards the the story and the basic idea is like 15 and a half because i'm a star wars fanatic i'm wearing a star wars hat right now my trust in the ea and the game itself we're took on we're talking probably like two two out of ten at, at the very highest i'm worried because star wars battlefront one didn't do very well it was criticized quite heavily and the biggest reason the biggest problem most of the inside developers said was that they were trying to get it to release in line with the film release at Christmas, right? So they wanted to release it at the same time to build They're up brushing that. it. You know, so and this game is holidays as well to meet with the film release then. They're so rushing it again. They're trying to release some. They're trying to bake a cake. That takes two hours and an hour by sounds of it. Again, this could be a recipe for disaster. I mean, we haven't seen anything of this game yet, which to me suggests it's just not together yet. They haven't even got the story together. <laughs> The Last of Us Part 2. We haven't really seen much. We've seen a cinematic. Bro, come on! That's a lie. We've seen the gameplay show, haven't we? And the truth shall set you free! No, no, there was a gameplay trailer with... That was her very name. dark. I was surprised was by how pretty... dark that was. It wasn't just dark. Yeah. It was violent. I believe at one point she jabbed a, a picket or a hatchet into someone's skull and then yeah. tore it out or something. There's a guy hanging and she like... Got it in open and got hanging out with like, I was like, disemboweled him. Yeah, I, I was remember. like, that's. I, this I, was, a I, was, I was a little trailer. bit winced up at that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like they took the first one and went, what this needs more gore. I don't think it did need more gore, but it took it to a dark place. So it's, I think it's definitely going to align with the whole Ellie's growing up. And we're going to help show that by making the world a lot darker and more sinister. If it comes out this year, it's going to get game of the year. In fact, I'm saying it now. I'm calling it now in January. It's going to get game of the year. And actually, I'm going to back you with that. I mean, God of War proved that a single player title can uh, come out on top. No, 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 I can't. <laughs> and I think PS4 is, is on this solid trail of the, the if you can promise me a solid, amazing single player game, we will back you and we will give you that exclusivity. Yeah. And it's working the for them. So multiplayer was actually really good. I it's think it was underrated. Really unspoken. It was very unspoken yeah. of, but it was really good. Really, it was good. actually. So, yeah, I played it a little bit too. You, they, they had a decent progression system, and the combat was pretty solid. You know, I've got no complaints with it. So we'll see. I don't know. They haven't confirmed multiplayer for this game, if I'm not mistaken. I don't uh, think they have, but I'm based on every Uncharted since Uncharted Two having it, and Last of Us One having it. I would assume they will. Maybe not at launch, but I think they'll definitely bring it in at some point.
do your research. And I, yeah, I would love I to agree. see. It. I think it'd be really. If it's like the first one, it'd be really good. I can't, that'd be great. If it's like the first one, but most likely upgraded, because they are good yeah. at upgrading their gameplay. They're, they're, definitely, they've they definitely proven more. that in the past. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Um, now they've already released a gameplay trailer. It came out in E3, um, as do most things. They're trying to shift away from the built down, ground down uh, Dark Souls formula. Bloodborne shifted into a very mobile style with different options and how you control your character. And they're taking that to the even further level with Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Um, you're playing this samurai slash ninja type character. He's very mobile. He can hop over his enemies. He has a grappling hook, if I'm not mistaken where he can hook onto the enemy, he can hook onto the, the terrain, different buildings. You're, you're very fast as a character, which is different for a Dark Souls game. You know, even Bloodborne, which was based off of more mobility, still had the standard, you're walking around the area, watching corners, and you're ready to get out the way at a moment's notice. But in this one, you're jumping at enemies, you're jumping over enemies, you're jumping into enemies. You are part rabbit, I don't know. Uh, you're a very mobile character. So they're <laughs> they're pushing this new gameplay style while keeping it to the uh, hardcore concept of the Dark Souls. You're facing a very challenging world. You will die, and you will be forced to learn from your mistakes. Um, and I'm very excited for that kind of game. I've always been one that's very much appreciative of a challenging game where I have to learn from my mistakes to overcome these challenges. Um, they're definitely coming out with new concepts to it so that it's just not another Dark Souls and we don't, you know, they don't stale out their content. Uh, but it's definitely one that you better uh, get your death counters ready for because you're going to be dying a lot. This is coming out March 22nd. Uh, it's coming out for all platforms. I don't know how you're feeling about it, Lou, but I, if, if you can't tell, I'm probably a little hyped for it. I don't like a challenge too much. I like to just kind of breeze through and get a good story. Uh... <laughs> I like first person shooters. If it's if it's anything beyond that, I struggle a little bit because I just lack attention span and I I don't really learn. I just keep like Well if I'm not mistaken I'm a fisting in Ashen, away until I get through. <laughs> you you've died a few times in Ashen if I'm not mistaken, but you have overcame those positions and continued on with the game. And you've gotten to the first boss, right? I haven't gotten that far into it yet. I think it's a boss, I don't bigger than the rest of everything. It, <laughs> it killed you though. Bar. It kicked my ass. Oh yeah, it kicked my ass. I mean, then again, sort of the spider, and it was like a basic NPC, so, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> so we've got two that are pretty much similar, and I'm kind of worried about. So you've got Rage 2 and Far Cry New Dawn. And Rage 2, when they first came out of the advert, everyone was really surprised because Rage 2, it's, it's, Rage 1 didn't do very well. Like, it was a well-known game, but it wasn't well-received. It didn't get reviewed very well. It had a lot of problems with design and it just, it just didn't go very well. Um, especially on PC, it had a lot of issues, technically. Oh my god, I had go so much well. problems with that. <laughs> so many technical issues on PC. I can attest to that technical problem. But, um, the Rage 2 came out, the trailer was very bright and it had a real like pink color to it. It was very, very over the top. It was very exciting, and the trailer looked really good. And then people went and played it at E3, and the overwhelming response was fantastic. Everyone was saying, "This is this is by far the best thing we played at E3." Everyone was saying how good this game was. It is not releasing on Steam, which is that, probably not the best comes thing. Out on Steam <laughs> later, they haven't said, but and at launch, it's confirmed it will only be on Bethesda's launch. So. That's going to be a real tough one for Rage 2. I think mean, that's going to be a big problem for them. I'm surprised in, in some ways that this game is coming out because the first one didn't do so hot. So Beth, Bethesda's putting a little bit of confidence into it. Um, now, gameplay-wise, I did enjoy Rage 1. I did. I'm not going to lie. It was a very interesting and fun game. Uh, it was very... It had its very... Its own gritty style to it, you know? Um, and it's very it was a uh, in a way. It was fallout -y, but in, in its own very aggressive style. Fallout doesn't really push the boundaries as much as this one did. This one had a lot of gore, a lot of action, a lot of explosions around every corner. Um, 
It's a very in-your-face game, and with a Fallout. title like Rage, it sounds like it. Which it's one is that? and Fallout combined. Yes. It's, it's, very like, over the top, it's like a post-apocalyptic nuclear uh, uh, Borderlands, which with a title like Rage, what do you expect? Um, so, I, I with gameplay-wise, I'm interested. Um, but it does have some direct competition. The weird thing is, Rage 2 was announced before Far Cry New Dawn. Then Far Cry New Dawn has been released, what, announced a couple of, about a month ago, maybe? Maybe two? Far and Cry New Dawn kind of came out of identical. nowhere. Identical. The trailers are identical, nearly. Like, they have the exact same pink. It's like they have the exact same color pink as like their mm. accent color for the videos. It's, why the hell Far Cry after not? I don't know. Whether it's to try and almost maybe mislead people to figure, oh, hey, it's the same thing. That looked good Except, when I saw that months ago, but actually it's a different yeah. game now. I don't know. It's very naughty. But they also but released. This one's coming out fall. sooner. Yep. Yes, this release is in February. Rage 2 release is in May. So despite being announced later, it comes out sooner, which I think is going to be a lot better for him as well. Because, you know, it's got a, the hype. I hate when games are announced too early. Because they build up this hype, and then they take someone to come out, everyone's forgot about it. When it comes to Rage, Rage is a much more in-your-face action-y. Uh, you're blasting through the game at, at 100 miles an hour, right? Um, I feel like Far Cry is a little bit more slow-paced. They try and build these uh, mechanics, these RPG mechanics, upgrading your character, spending more money on better gear and weapons and such. Um, and they try and squeeze in the story a little bit more uh, grounded in, in, in a realistic way. I feel like they're trying to push a new story onto us. Uh, maybe if you know, obviously continuing its its pace from Far Cry 5, uh, but still keeping that grand Far Cry 5 scale. It was a bit so, too soon. I agree. I feel like this game came out of nowhere, and it's probably going to have a lot of stolen assets from Far Cry 5, and uh, it's going to be just... Uh, in a way rushed honestly in this respect i might put my my balls in rage uh two's court uh both I of them so, so <laughs> I, I think rage is gonna do worse here because it's not as bigly known as far cry exactly but it I doesn't mean, have the primal, back. that was that was great i love far cry primal that didn't that was another game that kind of appeared out of nowhere very quickly i don't think it did as well in sales as it probably could have done because of that it just kind of oh, hey we're working on primal and it's out in a month's time. It's like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, exactly. It's like, so they, different. They kind of busted this out. And to compete with Rage 2, I think they're going to do better because of an earlier release date and of yeah, uh, a bigger backing and title. But overall, I think I'm going to have more fun with Rage 2. Uh, I think I'll definitely try both of these at some point. Um, but Far Cry, you know, obviously Rage 2 has had more time behind it. You know, um, Rage came out a good while ago. Uh, this game has probably been in the works for years, while Far Cry has probably been in the works for a year. Rage 2, I think, would definitely be a lot more fun, without a doubt. I I maybe not Absolutely. as good in the story, but I think for fun factor, it'd be amazingly better. I think leaps and bounds ahead of Far Cry. But with Far Cry releasing in February, anyone who does buy Far Cry, I think, would probably avoid buying Rage 2 because it's so similar. Even if it is significantly better, they don't think, ah, I've already played something in that same theme, so I'm not bored about that. People tend to I'm not, not buy things buy in the same theme again. So a post-apocalyptic world games in a row. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, that could be a real blow to Rage 2, unfortunately. I think they and I hope it doesn't kill it. There. The vision's back. Should it be? <laughs> I was never so excited for a game, but so completely and utterly <laughs> disappointed in a game and the potential that it had. Yep. I bought the Gold Edition, man. I bought the most expensive serious edition. Money, yeah. I played every single beta. I played the game on release. The moment mm. it came out for a good 10, 15 hours, I was one of the very first people to hit level 30 and I be in 10, the dark zone. I 15 minutes because I would crash <laughs> every 10, 15 minutes. I didn't have that kind of problem. I got past <laughs> all, the, all the bug issues, thankfully. One thing that you have to give credit to Ubisoft about is if they promise a game, they may fail on launch, They've done it with Siege, they've done it with For Honor, they've done it with The Division, but they do not give up on their games. Have they learned their lesson? Is The Division 2 going to be the game that The Division was after two years? With The Division, it took too long because they had so many problems with the game in the first place in development. But I think Watch Dogs 2 was the most underrated game. It was, Watch Dogs 1 was so bad that Watch Dogs 2 really suffered for that, I think. Watch Dogs 2 came out and it was exactly as promised. It looked, it was nothing stripped back from what I, I love, Watch this one of my favorite games. I love it. It's a brilliant game, really underrated. 
And that, for me, was the first sign they were turning things around. And they've seen... It was a huge upgrade. The vision. Was, they, they've really turned Tom's things around. Watch. Assassin's Creed. They, they are making yeah. some big risks, and they're doing some big changes. Again, Origin and Odyssey, Odyssey, major upgrades yeah. compared to the other uh, Assassin's Creed. was a hell of a gamble as well. It was a big change to the Assassin's Creed gameplay. Massive Completely change. shifted the gameplay. Completely. Hmm. I think the Division 2, I'm actually really excited for. I, I haven't seen a lot about it, because I'm trying to curb my expectations so much, so I'm not disappointed. <laughs> but it, it looks... I think the setting... Washington's a perfect setting. It looks like a much better setting for it. I'm excited by the events in the world now, like, like random events, as you said, that drop in and... And that you can be on your way to do something and something just happens and your squad are like it seems more like you run around on your own a lot less now. you're more in a party running around together a lot more needed than the first one yeah i, I think agree. there's more of a focus on um, that i think the first one was more do this on your own but hey you can play with others but it won't really help or benefit you it's just there i think this one's a lot more focused on bringing people together in their groups to eat and i, I that, agree that's a really good thing. i don't want to be cynical about it but the gameplay seemed very very similar to the Division 1. I think the big problem I have with Division is the bullet sponging. Even with Division 1, although it's toned back, I still have a problem with it. I don't like the unrealistic bullet taking. I prefer they did a more more NPCs with less health. I think that feels better. I think it's more realistic. It's more rewarding to kill more people than well, shooting one guy for 10 minutes. I think that's really boring for a start. How do you find a good balance between a hardcore shooter that feels realistic and an MMORPG that does not feel realistic. Destiny 2, they die very quickly. Most of them die in one, shit, one hit headshots, right? And you still feel progression in that. So I think that's where fallacy speed, the low level grunts, they need to have numbers of those in the higher level bosses with more armor. I think that needs to be a, the, the normal level ones, more of those with less health, because when they will take a long time to kill, when you have someone else to kill, that has to be even bigger, and then it's too far. That's the bullet sponging gets, it scales too high. So well, I think they need to reduce you've... the starting point so that the rest don't feel too hot. I think what they need to do as well, from Division 1, the, I think the initial thing they fixed, well, they started fixing and improving, was, it was very stationary. You've moved one bit of cover and you sit there for a very long period of time. You just That's stay true. in one spot. And that was very boring. I think they need to keep you moving around. Oh, they, they push you out of cover now. pushing grenades. <laughs> a lot more grenades stuff fly around the now. The shotgunners will rush yeah. your ass. Oh, Division my God. Division 2 needs it's, to have... It, it's scary. <laughs> but less moving around the same location and more movement through a large area is what I'm kind of hoping for. I want a bigger map so we can move through areas quicker but still have combat, but less stationary. Because I think that was the biggest stick point for me. Was It just felt very stuck to the floor and walls. You didn't seem to really go anywhere. You're I'd rather have three enemies, each with a third of that health, than just one with three times the health. Because it just sat behind one bit of cover going, Brr, oh, I'm taking damage, I've got to wait for my health to come back. Okay, Brr, oh, I'm hurt again, I've got to wait for my health to come back. I'm just rinsing and repeat. I'd rather have, he's That's coming towards true. me from that side, he's coming from that side, I've got to keep moving. Oh, I've got that one down, now he's dead, but I've still got two more to go. Because that feels like it's a shorter fight, when actually it probably takes longer because you have to move around a lot more, but it means you're That's more true. active, you're doing more, but right, really, you've taken out the same amount of health, it's just to split across better. I think that's what it's they need to focus on. It's not the same numbers. bullshit, repetitive yeah. skill. Just, I'm shooting you over blindly, doing a lot of damage. Oh, I've taken damage, I must wait five seconds yeah. for my health to come back. It's just, that just it's bores the death out of me. It yeah. needs to go. It's that, that's the, like, the worst aspect of the MMO. But that, nah. No? Yeah, that's what I, I understand that, definitely. More dynamic, fluid gameplay. Which, um, to their credit, the gameplay se trailer seemed to have been, but that was definitely one particular scripted event. Um, had that very scripted conversation on the microphone. Oh my god, Ubisoft oh. is so good at doing these incredibly cheesy scripted Anthem scenes. did it as well. Oh, two tangles coming in from the east. Yeah. We don't oh, talk go. like that. No one talks <laughs> like that. Did it have any scripted scenes? Make people at E3 who play it get recorded. Record their gameplay, record their reactions, show players reacting to your game in real time. Show like, players like having when something fun. cool happens, make them, show them going, oh, whoa, you know, show that. That's what makes us go, I'm ready. I'm you know, that's what people like that. streaming. Yes. That's what people watch streamers. They want to see that. They want to be a part of the excitement. We don't want to watch some some people go, oh, it's two tangles coming on the left. Yeah, I got him. <laughs> Good job, Stacey. Thanks, Brian. That, we just, that, doesn't, that doesn't excite me. Nobody likes that. The gameplay looked fun. The progression seemed interesting. I hope they can translate that into the Division 2 in a proper way throughout the entire game, not just one scripted scene. That was a lot. We did a lot of talking, unfortunately, as well. Probably more than we should have done, but we're new to this. This is our first <laughs> video, so uh, we've still got a lot of work to do. But 
I have a feeling we'll do a lot more independent videos focusing on specific games because I think it's too hard to try and talk about games in depth in multiple games in one video because it just goes on too long but um, I'd, I'd love to do some videos on these games separately as well you know like Vision 2 definitely and from there's loads so definitely. I think I'd definitely love to see anyone in the comments let us know if there's any games you're looking forward to we haven't mentioned that you'd like to see us take a look at or mention we probably just forgot about it um, there's quite a few in that list that we kind of oh yeah that comes out this year that chucked it on we didn't have time to look into it and get our facts straight before we talked about it and stuff so we'd definitely love to see in the comments if there's any games you're looking forward to that we haven't mentioned or we have mentioned you want to add your opinion to it you know think oh i'm looking forward to it because of this or you didn't mention this but this is gonna be in it or you know, anything like that we'd love to hear your comments and feedback on what you're looking for we could, as, well as, any, uh, as well as any uh as well as any agreements or disagreements on the games we did talk about this uh let, let us know how hyped you are for anthem it's coming right around the corner or, or uh the division two also right around the corner kingdom hearts three make sure you get that pre-order in you know what i'm <laughs> saying like <laughs> yeah definitely not yeah if, if there's anything you want us to talk about in future videos we'd love the feedback we're again we're new to this if you have any feedback is this too long is it too casual would you don't like our face i don't know anything if you have constructive feedback hit us up we'd love to hear it uh drop it in that comment below of course if you like the video then feel free to well, like I, and subscribe i said that line but like, oh, YouTube channel <laughs> ever we're gonna squeeze like it in there if you like this video like it subscribe at the post below love They're you like guys. your friend the dad <laughs> no uh oh. This is, we're going to try and continue this, uh, uh, maybe get a little bit more in depth in future videos with specific games. Yeah. Um, we'll keep you guys up to date on all the newest and upcoming games as we learn about them. And, uh, we'll see how this grows, you know, hopefully we can make this into something that you guys enjoy as much as us. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Have a good Peace day. Peace out. Moist.